What's going on guys? Robombie Teacher in the house and I'm here with the GPL Week 2 Power Rankings. I am not alone as always. I do these rankings with my good friend and fellow coronavirus half oh, just kidding. Denise Joe, how you doing man? <coughs> That's me. No, I'm joking. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> and if you haven't of course seen our week two power or week power ranking videos before our power rankings are always broken down with win-loss as the primary factor and differential as a tiebreaker. Uh, there is actually a kind of an interesting point this week where three people have actually got the exact same win-loss and differential, but we'll talk a little bit more about how those rankings are decided once we get to them. Of course, we do add our opinions on top of it. I did get a little bit of criticism um, from a couple of people last week about the video being super long when it's a power ranking video. But, of course, we are giving our commentary as well. We're not just going to say this person's 16th because they lost this week. That's kind of boring and not really worth it for you guys to watch. But, anyhow, now we got that stuff out of the way, let's talk about number 16, which is going to unfortunately be EXO and the EXO Stormback Drills. Took a bit of a battering this week. Um... I'm not a huge fan of the reason he gave for this, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, I don't really like the idea of not being motivated or whatever. Uh, I am aware that Exo plays a lot of leagues and I know he runs his own league. Um, I get that, but at the same time, I, I don't really buy that kind of excuse myself. I, I prep for every match I play, no matter how many leagues I play in. Um, it felt like this was kind of a throwaway, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I watched this game this morning actually on my work, and <laughs> clearly to say that it was a bit of a stomp. Um, he prepped incredibly well, and he had nothing but physical attackers on his team from where I can tell. I think the prep was just poor. Uh, he probably does, like you say, he's probably got a lot of drafts going on. His own draft just literally kicked off and started, so I wouldn't. Plus, he's got work and a social life outside of the internet. I mean, who really has those? But. He does, clearly, and uh, it might, he might just not have enough time to prep, which is fine. I mean, I understand. I mean, I, I find it hard to prep this season, too, but that 6-0, uh, how the mighty has fallen from last season. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah, it is I worth pointing out he has made um, a lot of trades, though. He has used up his, his um, transactions. I'm not a big fan of all of them. I'm surprised to see Mammoth Swine getting cut. I didn't think Mammoth Swine was an issue for his team at all. In fact, I thought that was one of the best parts of his team. Uh, but he has finished his calls now, uh, which was kind of funny. But yeah, I'm I'm not entirely convinced. I don't feel like this is going to be the best season for him. I did actually back him in, par in the Pickums to take a win over Burger this week. But again, like that's a tentative one for me. That's why I put it as 1-0. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope Exo turns this season around. I hope he actually can put the work in because if you ask me who was 0-2 and negative 11 differential after two weeks without knowing who it was I probably would never have put EXO there in terms of player level so he needs to turn this around he needs to start putting that that game in his team isn't completely bad it does have a lot of redeeming features so I do expect to see some wins on the board yeah, if I, and it's X, so he, I'm pretty sure he can uh, bounce back, and his first couple of matches have been pretty strong opponents, to be fair, and this is a new generation and a new league, so maybe he's probably, he could just very well be struggling to adjust, oh, and I'm guessing a lot of the snipes that happened in the draft didn't really work out in his favor, and he might be still recovering from that, but it's XO, I believe that he'll bounce back. Yeah, same. Let's hope so. All right, coming in at number 15 and is going to be Krimpix. Uh, he's falling back down again, uh, unfortunately, with that 0-2 minus 10. But not quite last. Yep, but not last, though. So that's the positive side of it. <laughs> uh, I actually watched a little bit of this game against Tyler. Um, I felt really bad for Krimpix. We are all, of course, aware that Krimpix has got a lot of other things going on at the moment. On behalf of the league, we do, of course, wish things improve. And if we can help in any way, if you need to offload on any of us, feel free uh doors are always open but yeah yeah it's an unfortunate one where he's just mental boomed uh he made a mistake turn one um miss click or however um it was a bit of an unfortunate mistake and it's just got to his head and he just couldn't focus for the rest of the game we've all had those moments i can pretty sure you and i can probably recall quite a few of the ones that we've had over the years uh, it's a horrible situation to happen but it happens um i think next week he'll come back stronger i think he'll Probably be in a bit better a position. I don't remember who he's playing. Um, he is playing... Well, he's playing solo, so I don't expect too much from that. But 
Uh, hopefully he gives Solo a decent match. The, pay the matchup for him isn't actually that bad. His team is quite nice. Um, it's very simple in a way, but it's kind of fitting for Crimpix in a way. So I kind of hope that he can get that team working and rolling at some point in the season. I do think he will get wins though. This is definitely going to be his, his season for a win. Like, I, I just know it's coming soon. I fortunately haven't had the pleasure to watch this game. I am just going off of what um, the doc has been updated with. And two kills for Stunfisk. I want to know if that happens. So I'm going to be going to watch that straight after this uh, yeah. <laughs> recording, honestly. But no, I, 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 he's, the guy's had a lot of things going on. Like Revolver said, like, no pressure, dude. If you need some time, take as long as you need. Like, we understand. Um, hope all, everything does work out for you. And uh, I can't wait for you to pull up for your next win, dude. It's going to happen. It's going to happen at the least when we expect it to. So I can't wait. Exactly. Maybe he beats Solo this week. Who knows? Uh, that will be kind of fun. All right. Coming in at number 14, then, is going to be Sylvie. The Sylvie rule still in effect, where Sylvie always loses. <laughs> I'm kind of not too surprised to see this at all. Um, I didn't think Sylvie had much of an out against Professor anyway. I backed Professor to actually... Win this exactly right. I got this perfect in my pickums. Uh, I feel like Sylvie actually should be able to play better than he is, but this matchup was not the matchup for him to play better in. No, and once again, uh, helping Professor build. Me and Professor seem to be the build buddies at the moment. Um, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's just based on the fact that both me and Professor have played with Sylvie on that so long that it was kind of really easy to prep for him honestly like we kind of know his game style we know a good chunk of what to expect from his pokemon and i think you said it yourself in the pickums that professor just pretty much just built exactly what he needed exactly every mon was built to for a specific reason and it seemed to fulfill that reason did get a little confident and cocky towards the end trying to go for that 6-0 which did cost him two pokemon but point still stands he kind of dominated that game <laughs> Yeah, and to be honest, even at that point, like the differential wasn't the hugest deal in the world for him. Um, he was comfortably ahead um, anyway, so even if he had to sack him on to guarantee the win, that was probably the better way to do it. Um, you know, 6 0 is literally your opponent has to completely play awful to get 6 0s in this league. So, and that is exactly what we would have expected. Um, but yeah, Perfect has to make this pretty easy. Uh, it's light work for Sylvie. Um, Sylvie actually plays you this week, which is kind of funny because you're up next. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, I didn't actually watch too much of this match, uh, but I had half hardly hoped you would keep your winning record up against Transel in the match of Smack Talk between the <laughs> two of you, which was definitely fun to be in the middle of between the videos last week. <laughs> it was definitely fun. Unfortunately, it didn't quite come off this week. Uh, I think your rather hard starts to seasons is becoming a thing with the GPL. Only last season was kind of enforced on yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I had I, I went into the game a lot more prepped than I did in my first week. But a lot of the things I prepped for, it just didn't go well. Like, I had a whole bunch of strategies that kind of got foiled at the very beginning of the game. Um, as soon as I lost Primarina, it was pretty much over at that point. Like, Type Null wasn't doing much. Um, the uh, the freaking pile of swine dude just blocked my toxicity from doing anything. I couldn't kill it. Um, Necrozma, I, I, I'm going to throw my hands up in the air and say, I don't know if I can clear what I'm doing with Necrozma. I just can't get that mon to work. <laughs> it's such a great Pokemon, belt. but it's like super situational in how you use it. Just, it and it's has kind of... so many options and choices. I just, usually I'm okay with that. You know, I like the, the type of Pokemon that, uh, draft the Pokemon that you you can't predict easily, but I, I just couldn't make Necrozma work, and that's ideally why it boiled down to me swapping him out, honestly. But it was just a bad matchup, and uh, I feel like I went into the game with the expectation of losing, and that probably also that didn't never help, helps. So. That never helps. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know that feeling go too well. So, but yeah. Uh, who are you playing this week? I forget. Oh. Uh, Sylvia. Sylvie. So, yeah, I expect I expect a much better result from that. Uh, I'm going to throw my hands up in the air, and I said it in the Discord, and I'm saying it in the video, so you got even more proof. If Sylvia on Sweeps move a Lunoon, I'm done. I'm just done. <laughs> I'm retiring. Somebody else can have my spot. I'll help Professor. I'll front office for him. 
I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. So if suddenly hey, I have a new host for the hey, Power Rankings because Denise Joe's like, fuck this shit, I don't care. That's why. All right. <laughs> All right. Coming in at number 12 then is going to be Nitro taking another loss this week. Uh, Nitro actually lost to Cool. Uh, this one, I think, is put down to a bit of a lack of mechanics understanding. Um, lack of understanding around how to play Substitute. Um, constantly trying to Leech Seed a Substitute isn't going to work. Um, he actually kept making the same mistake of trying to status a Substitute throughout the whole game. Despite Shadow in the chat actually me telling him during the battle that um, you can't actually status a Sub. Uh, this really did cost him any form of pressure. Um, the... Uh, Ninjask just sitting behind a sub and baton passing all day long um, really just caused Nitro some issue. Allowing his um, bulkier mons to get tricked from the Rotom fan also did not help his course either, um, as well as losing a scarf on his Alolan Raichu. Uh, I felt like the biggest crux for me, aside from the sub though, was how overcomplicated his Galarian Corsola set was. Uh, running Rest Talk with Will O Wisp and Nightshade. I'm not a huge fan of that particular set. I feel like Rest Talk is actually worse than the Strength Sap set because Strength Sap actually gives you that recovery against what was a very physically offensive team in Cool's team. Um, and you could have had the more chance to guarantee the Will O Wisp, which would have caused him even. Um, less issues because obviously the second um, turn of rest that he sleep talked he actually sleep talked into rest and ended up doing nothing and taking free damage so it's a situation where I think he needs to kind of not necessarily oversimplify his thing but like take the time away right? and actually sort of take some of the difficulty out and take some of the RNG out to give him a bit more of a streamlined chance to actually pick up games yeah so I was actually in the, the call with these two while they were battling. And there was a few points, multi, in fact, there's multiple points where the game could have just gone and the tree, I'm gonna use a bit of a thing here, U-turn in uh, <laughs> Nitro's favor. There was an instance where I believe uh, there was a, uh, what was it? A, I wanna say Malama out on the field and then Halucha, I'm pretty sure it was Halucha with, I think he was in, 36 HP. Um, the Raichu, <laughs> Nitro's Raichu was actually carrying a Rocky helmet because of the trick, right? Mm. If if <laughs> Nitro had switched out from Malamar into Raichu, the Halucha would have died from the Rocky helmet damage. Mm. We calced the Ferrophone Iron Bob's damage. It would have cool would have lived with 102 HP. Good prep. Good good calculations worked out why he takes so long to make turns now <laughs> <laughs> but it, if that switch into Raichu would have happened then uh, cool would have been the one on the losing side um also from my understanding in the terms of the par trying to use thunder wave for protect apparently i'm pretty sure uh nitro read it wrong but apparently it said on bulbapedia that he could do it through substitute which he obviously learned you can't <laughs> um, yeah multiple tries um kind of the uh similar case of insanity expecting the same something different thing to happen trying the same thing over and over again but you know it, what happened happened and hey cool's two up now yeah i mean lesson learned for nitro hopefully he'll take that forward going on to his next match i do think his next match is going to be a brutal one for him he is actually playing dj who is in phenomenal form right now so that is not a matchup i expect much from at all but nitro is capable of pulling out surprises but we'll see uh we'll have to see going forward all right Coming in at number 11 then is going to be Cap Guy Nagoshi. We're now into the one-on-one -on -one territory. A uh, little bit negative on the differential. Uh, kind of an unfortunate one. But that being said though, I was actually very surprised by this win. But I'm very happy to see it. Because it means that Solo doesn't get 8-0. <laughs> but yeah, I actually was surprisingly impressed by this one. Uh, I didn't really expect much from this game. I expected Solo to be able to just run through this. Uh, but I think uh, holding the G-Max for Charizard right until the death was a very smart little play there. Uh, it definitely helped. It definitely mitigated that Dracovish damage, uh, particularly with the Max Wormwind. Uh, but yeah, it was an interesting set. Uh, definitely an interesting game to watch. I was actually there watching the whole game um, live. That was one of the few ones I've actually managed to watch live this week. Uh, I definitely liked their play. I thought their play was much better than their week one. 
um, which I'm very happy to see that. Uh, I've, I've also heard, having spoken to Transal privately before this, that they're actually kind of motivated to play their next match, match, which is really nice to see. I really hope they do put in some good work here, um, because I can't remember who they're playing. They are playing... Professor? No, uh, maybe? No, because Professor's no. playing Transal. Um, they're playing Tyler, actually, who's currently undefeated, so... Uh, that's, mm. that's an interesting one. Uh, we'll see how that one goes. But, yeah, hopefully this is the start of good things from them. That's I'm gonna be I'm biased and gonna shout out my boys at Goshi and Capca, you know, I'm good friends with them and all. Um, I was quite excited, really happy to see them win. No, no nothing against you, so, but, you know, I, you know, I, I like the underdog, you know, and they, <laughs> let me get me wrong, they've got Komoto, I kinda have to back them up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I when that God of War came out and took out three Pokemon, I was like, well, pff, that's this them, is man. it. Yep, game that's over it, again. That's it. And I was getting starting to get a little upset, and then suddenly the freaking Charizard comes out. I was like, right, if they Hurricane here, if they Max Airstream, they're gonna have a pretty good chance. And out it came, and I was like, oh, ooh, yeah, <laughs> here we go, boys. The actual plays uh, came in. Yeah. That that also, if Charizard had missed that, hur like he they had to hit Fire Blast and Hurricane. On those last two turns, Whoa, if the, Cap, as Cap guy put, his butt had never been so clenched. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. That's I can't wait for true. the next game. Yeah. Needs more body press. Team body press needs more body press. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, I know. I hope so. All right, coming in at number ten then is gonna be Shadow. I'm kind of surprised to see Shadow take a bit of a fall from grace, uh, but at the same time, kind of. Not too surprised by it because DJ played out of his mind. Um, the Toxic Spikes and Hex Dragapult strat was something that Shadow did not have an answer to at all, it seemed. Uh, which really surprised me to see that. I don't know if there was any hazard removal on Shadow's team. Um, but yeah, definitely an interesting one for me. Uh, kind of surprising to see that. But this is a clash of two of the GPL heavyweights. These guys are phenomenally good players. Uh, I would never expect Shadow to lose this hard mind but i did actually back dj to win this match uh so i'm kind of happy with that i went up to transfer on that one but yeah surprising to see that i don't actually know if shadow did bring hazard removal i think transfer wasn't sure either when i was talking to him about it but yeah it's a surprising what oversight from shadow if that was the case uh that's not a mistake i expect to see from shadow but i won't expect to see that again for the rest of the season um, looking at his team, he does not have removal, and the only thing that could have absorbed the toxic spikes would be the toxic croak, but he didn't bring that of fear of well everything killing it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I I haven't really sat down to watch the game. I I mean I I think I caught it live on my phone just as I was falling asleep at some point. It was definitely a game. <laughs> um, DJ. Uh, using the Millennium Puzzle to just look into the future and see yeah. everything that Shadow was going to do. I mean, I think he knew he was going to win before he actually won that game, but I don't know. He prepped really good for it, it seems. Hmm. But that being said, though, Shadow is playing... Let's see... Uh, do -do -do -do. He's playing cool this week, so that is a win I expect him to pick up. Uh, Hopefully, no more oversights. Uh, that's what I'm expecting to see. But we will see as time comes, because Cool's actually got a better record than him at the moment. If if Cool wins against Shadow, then I feel like he's definitely at least proven himself to be somewhat of a confident baller at that point. <laughs> if. Well, yeah. If, if is the big one there. Um, but we shall see. All right. So these next three ones are actually got the exact same win loss and differential. However, um, upon sitting down this with Transal, we were looking at um, how to differentiate these because they were all so close. But we've actually decided to rank them based on how their loss was, both on differential and actual performance. So that's why, because of that, Solo has taken a massive fall from grace and sitting down in ninth. Uh, definitely. Uh, Bit of an upset, that has to be said. Uh, quite a big loss for Solo. Um, this was a matchup that everybody expected him to win, um, especially after his early game with that God of War. But it didn't happen. He kind of fell off in the late game, which was a little surprising to me. That's not something we expect to see from Solo. But nonetheless, he is still a big threat. That Dracovish team is a monster. Um, so if he pilots it correctly, then he's going to be winning almost the rest of his games for the rest of the season, apart from week six when he plays me. So, you know. 
Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do recall looking into the chat after the game and Solo uh, himself I think was pretty disappointed with the result hmm. and vowed that it's never going to happen again and that he's going to 6-0 from now on from this point onward so, <laughs> I like the confidence, I, I like that a lot am, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that if you don't then I'm kicking you out of the league now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean to be fair though Solo is not the kind of player to like super go on a massive loss streak like solo when he loses a game he comes back stronger so like it's a terrifying prospect for everyone who has to face him i have to admit i do feel very sorry for crimpix who has to play him this week because that's probably not the best time to play He's solo out for blood <laughs> but yeah solo is a very very scary player he will be shooting up these rankings again in no time uh there's no two ways about that but yeah, uh, definitely going to be interesting to watch. Uh, I'm, I'm always happy to see when people admit that they made mistakes and things went wrong, um, rather than make excuses for it. That's something that I don't like, um, personally. But yeah, uh, good play on his end to actually be quite honest about it. I like that. Uh, hopefully, we see some more good stuff. I'm expecting here a very strong result this week. Uh, I didn't back him to 6-0. Uh, maybe I should have done, but we'll see. <laughs> So coming in at number eight, then is actually going to be Happy Nico. And uh, slightly weaker loss. He only lost by one differential to Burger in week one, which is why he's actually here. Uh, he did actually play very well this week. I was actually very happy to see um, his actual game. Uh, his game did not go as well as he would have wanted, um, but he actually played pretty solid in the loss. It was just like that odd minor outplay that really cost him in the end. Um, and to be fair, both him and Berger played that game extremely well. Uh, so a 1-0 loss is nothing really to be sniffed at. Um, I had the same loss in week one to Tyler, so I know exactly what it's like. When you play well and you only lose 1-0, it doesn't really feel that bad. Um, so Nico's going to come back and he's going to really start putting the pressure on. Unfortunately, he has to play me this week, so I'm not quite sure he's going to be too happy about that. Um, I know he's already said in the chat, oh god, Zero Aura this week, um, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, definitely interesting. I think he's going to be a big threat for playoffs, especially. Uh, I think he's playing perfectly fine i don't see too many issues he's definitely playing his team better than i thought he would uh, i kind of feel a little bit bad i underestimated it quite a bit but it just goes to show though that even on paper you can play a, a slightly proposed weaker draft um better than it might be dude that ginga <laughs> you need to calm down with that ginga oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no it i only really caught the end of this game so i can't really comment too much on it but so far both players are seem to be doing pretty well and honestly i want to see more games I, I actually have to sit down and watch the games to see more games so i guess it's kind of contradictory there but you know all in all i mean he's got the top kill participation pokemon in the game or in the league at the moment so clearly he must be doing something right on that front yeah um i do i get to fight him I no, he's so. in my conference, sir. So yeah, good. Face. Keep him up there. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. I already got, got enough shit down here. Yeah. I don't want <laughs> yeah, I'm actually good looking luck. forward to my match against him, though. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how Ooh. he plays against me. Um, go pick him style and go, mm, I think uh, I think he's going to win, going to beat you 4-0. Uh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, in. guys, I'm now going to be looking for a new host for Power Ranking, so if you're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's move aside, Trensel. We've got a new pick -em coach coming in. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm looking forward to my match, Nico. I hope you are as well, even if you're slightly scared of Zero Aura. But, yeah, whatever. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so coming in at number seven is actually going to be DJ, who has the same differential. He, of course, only lost 1-0 to Trancel, who's one of the strongest players in that division, so there's really nothing to be ashamed of there. But this week was an absolute dismantling of one of the stronger players in that conference. I was very happy to see this. DJ's been in fine form all season long. He's been piloting this team with... Not, not, say, not really flawless, but it's just so effective like his prep is so smart the way he thinks about his team the way he builds his teams and how he builds against his opponent is really shining through again you know i memed on him a lot last season i was always backing against him for the fun of it so he flamed me in the discord and whatever but like i have always got a lot of respect for a player like this because he is very tough um 
I'm quite grateful I don't have to face them uh, until playoffs because <laughs> this would be one opponent I'm genuinely scared of down in that conference. Yeah, yeah, DJ, <laughs> he needs, there's another ca uh, character, another player that needs to calm down a little bit. <laughs> um, Especially I with that like Dragon Ball. Definitely, he's definitely, I feel like he's definitely out to prove himself, um, not being able to make it to the finals of season one. Now he's out to make it to the final, or pretty much win season two. I, oh man, I'm looking forward to seeing how far this guy can actually go, and do I get to fight this guy? Yes, you do. Shit. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I forfeit, ha <laughs> <No. laughs> ha! Um, you are actually playing him in week four, so you're playing him after this week. So... <laughs> I feel for you, man. I do feel for you, because th that's one of these opponents that you look at in the schedule and you think, uh-oh. <laughs> especially like in the form he's in right now. But... Uh, Especially oh, in the form he's in, like I'm, I'm in awe of this guy and how well he's playing. Um, if if this was purely a subjective power ranking rather than the objective way we do it, he would obviously be higher up. But like at this point, results basis has to take over. Um, so yeah, uh, he'll definitely shoot up. I think he's got a comfortable match this week versus Nitro. He should be easy to be able to abuse that matchup. Uh, so we'll see. But I'm definitely looking forward to it. Alright, coming in at number 6 then, I'll let you take this one as it's actually me. <laughs> I'll let you talk about this one. <laughs> <laughs> the real team body press coming in. Yep, the royal body press for Bombies. I should have put that on here. <laughs> uh, shout outs to those who shout outs to notice that I put that in the title of my battle video. Thank you for that. That was definitely worth putting in. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I can't tell if you played really well or if Exo played really bad. I think it was a combination of both, honestly, at this point. Um, you just outprepped him. Uh, Which was actually defense. funny because low-key, I only took about half hour to prep that team because um, I didn't have time. Like, I was you, kind of stuck. All, all, so... all you needed to bring was freaking body press and iron defense and it seemed to get the job done I and mean, i think you'd bulk up at one point maybe no no the him. sork bulk like up he... but i acid armored on gudra and uh, to get the other body that's press right. off um but yeah the acid armor gooey um gudra definitely put in a lot of work there i don't think he was expecting gooey but at the same time it was like it was well worth it to bring especially when i saw six physical attackers i was surprised not to see salazzle come um Ribombi, i was not too surprised not to see come uh very few people are ever brave enough to bring my mascot against me um but yeah i think in general this was just a case of I had the superior matchup by far, and I abused it to its absolute maximum. Like, I could have potentially got six kills with body press only, but at the time, I was just like, I'll just take the Earthquake kill. <laughs> I might as well. Um, but yeah, it was um, a rough matchup for EXO. It was a nice, easy matchup for me. I had the smart prep in. Um, I actually had some spicier sets um, that I could have used, but I just kept it simple. And sometimes keeping it simple is the best way to do it. Um, I will have a tougher match this week, um, having to play Nico, who's been playing very well. It's going to be tough. Um, my matchup wise against him is very hit and miss. Um, it's just going to be who plays the better on the day. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a fun one. But uh, this is proof of what I said in my video from week one is generally when I lose, I come back a lot hard hit harder hitting. And Exo was on the receiving end of that this week. Uh, also, yeah. shout out to what could have been or what possibly is the fastest Rebombi Exo game I think I've ever watched. Oh, it is. It is definitely the fastest game we've ever played. Like, our, my shortest game against him was over half an hour. That one was like 15 minutes. So, yeah. I uh, definitely hope for better from EXO, but yeah. Either way, I'm out for blood. I want I want to get a lot better than quarterfinals this season. And I think I've got the draft to do it, so we'll see. But, yeah. Coming in at number five is actually going to be cool. Uh, cool, of course, taking another rather surprising win to me, but I'm happy to see that he's actually doing well and he's not going 0-8, um, even though his draft probably should have done. Uh, but yeah, he punished his opponent's lack of knowledge and that's how you had to play. I was a little bit surprised by the greedy high jump kick when the Galarian Corsola was sitting there. Um, that was definitely a surprise to me. 
But yeah, uh, nonetheless though, he played as well as he could um, at the end with the pieces that he had. Um, and he took advantage of Nitro's mistakes. And that's exactly what, how you win your battles. Right? That's how any battle works. If your opponent messes up, you've got to punish them. And Cole's done that twice now. Um, I will be interested to see how he does against Shadow. Uh, Shadow is not the kind of player who will make those mistakes. So we will see um, if this, this win streak continues. I'm not quite sure how, where to put him. I do expect him to see him, him lose a couple of games. There are some very tough opponents coming his way in the next coming weeks. So we shall see. It's really going to put the pedal to the metal and give him a real test for this next coming weeks with the more difficult opponents. He's definitely had a nice sort of like easy transition into the, the league. Pretty much did right out prepping and destroying me and then just powering through uh, Nitro. But now it now comes the real technical stuff, and I really want to see how he's going to do. He's prepped pretty pretty well, I'd say pretty phenomenally the last two weeks. Uh, be it that he has a lot, a lot of help, obviously, you know, that's what the league's about, is getting help and hmm. prepping with people and such, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do and what he can bring. And heck, you know, I, I wouldn't be, at this point, Maybe if it was week one, I'd be surprised. But at this point, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if he does manage to beat Shadow. We'll see. Um, I obviously back Shadow to win, and so did Transal. But like, it's interesting. I'm just looking at cool schedule now. He has to play Shadow this week, then Transal next week, and then DJ the week after. Like, those are matches that, that I test. really do not expect Cool to win any of. So that will be the interesting side. Um, the Holy Trinity of players. That is luck. a nasty <laughs> schedule. I'm glad that's not me. I have to be honest. Oh, uh, yeah, I feel bad. But, yeah. Um, we, we'll see. We'll have to see what Cool can do. Um, he did make some changes to his team that I do think are significant improvements. Um, but we will have to see how he actually can pilot those now he has improved them. Alright, so coming in at number four then is going to be Burger. Uh, I am really pleased for this. Like I I was talking to Burger actually before when I was trying to look for a player from my Discord to join the league. Um, and I was really impressed to see how well Burger has done, considering he's had to pick up the scraps post-draft. Uh, and how well he's been playing. This guy's actually in good form, and I'm excited to play him. Uh, he gets his opportunity to finally try and get his win against me. He's currently 0-4 as his record against me right now. So, <laughs> definitely interesting, but the guy's in good form. He's got a good team. Uh, it's a simplistic team in a way where Haxorus and Bolton are basically designed to break through who the team, and then there's other pieces around it which can help them set up, which is really cool. I like his team actually quite a lot. This team's going to be a nightmare for me to prep for because I actually <laughs> don't have a couple of answers to some of his team. But yeah, I'm really excited for Burger. I'm really happy that someone has come from the ADL and is actually playing this well. The ADL held people that have joined this year have actually done very well so far this season, um, and I hope that good form continues. He's got a rough-ish matchup against Exo. His matchup is kind of slightly awkward um, with Exo's changes, but who knows? I won't be surprised if Burger picks up another win here. Yeah, yeah, like you said, for someone who came in literally a day after we all drafted our Pokemon, obviously some of us got what we wanted. Not all of us did. Sorry, Exo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but obviously Burger picking up the scraps and able to put something together and also come out now at number four position at week two i mean it just says a lot about the guy and his sort of like expertise about working around these pokemon actress is probably his saving grace in all of this mm. slip of sticky webs um it is is becoming beautiful boltan did a lot of good work in the first game um i need to see that camera play because uh that pokemon's amazing and he needs to use it this week because I would love to see X is it Exo? It's I'd love to see Exo lose yeah. to a Cramorant. So, <laughs> imagine him getting you know. imagine him getting killed by a gulp missile. Ch choice specs gulp missile? Come on, let's do it. <laughs> let's see it, Burger. I know you can do it. <laughs> if anyone can do it, it's you, buddy. I right. hope. I have hope. Ah, dear. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. So into the top three now, coming in at number three. We didn't nerf him hard enough, boys. We tried. Uh, Transal is up here. <laughs> Down with the uh, system. <laughs> He's going to hate you for that. But yeah, <laughs> obviously, winner of the Smack Talk match of the season. Uh, definitely not a surprise. Uh, I, th I felt like his matchup was actually decent. I backed you to win just because I wanted to see you win. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, it didn't quite happen. Uh, I will be interested to see how he handles Professor, who he plays this week. 
Uh, that is one. I, I said this in the uh, pickums. I think that's going to be match of the season so far. Um, these two guys are both very, very skilled battlers. Um, they've both got very interesting teams uh, that are playable. Uh, we might finally see Cinderace. Uh, that might be a joy Ooh. to watch. Uh, we haven't actually seen Cinderace all season so far. He hasn't needed it. He's just played in true Transal style in comfortable and controlled fashion. Um, hopefully... A professor kind of hands him his first loss. That would be nice. Because uh, <laughs> the hen, he might fall back down the rankings again. But yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. But yeah. He's a strong player. And it's never a surprise to see him up here. Uh, hopefully, we will provide a good match now we've built it up so much. This boy, this 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 kid, this, this Transal fella, he needs to stop getting used to winning because... <laughs> When I, when I help Professor build, he's going to be six foot under. I tell you that now. <laughs> oh, shit. Minus six differential. Either way, he's going down. Uh, if I can't do it, I'll make sure somebody else can do it. I'm going to put more time into Professor's team than my own team this week. <laughs> but either way, he played well in all honesty, and he deserves the position he's in. Um, he did outplay me. I outplayed myself also, but he also definitely took advantage of that so in all seriousness he, he did play very well and i, I throw my I, I do give you know kudos to it to you so good job chancel don't get used to it <laughs> all right then coming in at number two is gonna be tyler uh i'm super excited for this actually i said in the announcement when we t told everybody who was gonna be in that this guy is a threat and I'm currently being proven right. Uh, pretty comfortable result, actually, to be fair, against arguably the weakest seed in the conference in Krimpix, who's not had the easiest time of it so far. Uh, but nonetheless, though, he's played exactly how I expected to see. He's, he's had decent prep. He has had help from his couple of front office members that he uses, uh, including Professor, which does make a lot of sense. Um, his team was very solid. Um, I do think that he is using his team as well as he can right now. Uh, I will be interested to see how he handles Cap Guy, who can be very unpredictable. Uh, it won't be as easy to beat Cap Guy as it was to beat Krimpix in this instance. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to see Tyler up here. Uh, it's good to see him doing well. Um, I've always said this a lot when it comes to people that I spot that have potential. Uh, he'll, they're always going to be a threat whenever you think about it. Uh, it'll just be interesting to see what happens if Tyler is put behind and how his mentality changes from there because he is still young and he is still learning at the same time yeah no tyler's come out fists punching and he's definitely proven himself to be quite the uh quite the sight to see um i do i think he can beat a goshian cap guy i don't think so honestly i think it's gonna be really, really close but i think they might just have a little slight edge over tyler however Tyler's proven to be no pushover and I w again would another scenario where if he wins I will not be surprised in fact some might say it's even more likely but I obviously I'm back in my boys um I also you back backed your Cap boy. Guy this week there we are so on and all though it's gonna be a hell of a game and I'm really looking forward to it they, he played I from what I can tell I because I didn't watch the game from what I can tell he played really well uh, to get a 6-0, I guess he must have done something, right, you know? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, to their next game, I'm going to be looking, I'm going to be waiting on that one. It's probably going to be my highlight of next week, besides Professor and Transil. Yeah, exactly. Definitely a high matchup. Definitely interesting to see how far he can go. Uh, I do expect him to be a playoff contender, so that's what we're expecting to see. Which means coming in at number one is Mr. Modest himself, Professor Chaos. Uh, so well, much for not being very good weeks. or so much for not being experienced. This guy is a monster right now. He's on absolute form. I said this during my post-draft power rankings. This, this team is either going to be extremely good or it's extremely bad. Uh, he's piloting it like a monster right now. This guy team builds extremely well. He's a very, very scary opponent to play against. And he's been piloting the team as close to perfection as his team will allow him to. So this is exactly what we expected to see, uh, and he is tough. Uh, there's a reason I put him this high up in the power rankings, even in post-draft. Uh, I knew what we could see from him. His matches have been relatively, I would say, in his favor. Um, both Nitro and Sylvie are not the strongest players in here, which you could potentially try and hold against him, but I wouldn't. I think no matter who you're playing against, you've got to play at your best, and Professor has always managed to do that. So... 
I'm hesitant, but I am backing him again to keep his undefeated streak going. I have actually backed him to beat Transal. Uh, either him or Transal is not going to be undefeated after this week, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think Professor is definitely another case where he's kind of had a nice sort of like leeway into... I mean, like you said, his opponents... Nitro, very new to the league. Sylveon plays like he's new to the league. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Sylvia, I'm joking, I'm joking. I, you're probably going to beat me in all fairness, but um, no, Professor's definitely done something right these past two weeks. I've We've both sat down for like an hour or two just going through every possibility, every situation, and more, more ten, nine times out of ten, it's mostly him. Uh, I'll, I, I could go away for five minutes and come back to like 20 mes messages about how this could happen and this could happen all just based around one Pokemon. Mm. He literally thinks of everything and everything. Uh, the only thing I think that caught him off guard last time was Gilvanchel being choice scarf, but even that didn't make a difference because it just allowed him to one shot with Manetric. Um, all in all though, going into the Transal game... <sighs> It's going to be a hard force colliding with a whatever you call that, whatever that quote is. It's going to be a very tough game for both of them, and I'm going to see. I'm I'm going to love seeing Professor's playstyle clash against Transal's playstyle. I think they're both somewhat similar yet different enough where it's going to be a hell of a game. They're similar in like concept of prep, but they're very different in the way they actually play their teams. Like Transal tends to be a lot more aggressive, um, whereas Professor's a lot more calculated. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they stack up against each other um, and who actually does pick up the win. I have backed Professor to win relatively easily. I think it was a 3-0 I backed him for, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm definitely excited. I can't wait for that the, match. That's going to be the most the only... fun match to commentate. The only problem I, I can see with Professor versus Transal is Professor, similar to myself, can get quite tilted. So if mm. if certain things don't go his way in the first couple of turns, that might put him in a bad mindset and may affect the way he plays. I know he could get quite uh, self-conscious about certain things in terms of like how he plays or the moves that are being made. Um, you can see that evident through his previous games where he does type a lot and he is quite self aware of what's going on so as long as he doesn't get let transfer inside his head, as long as he doesn't get inside his own head i think he should be okay however if that does happen then it's going to be an easy street for transfer yeah well let's hope for not and that's gonna be it of course that is all the power rankings for this video thank you of course denny for joining me as always you are welcome all right and we are gonna get on out of here my name is robami teacher that's denisha or, or just not suit yourself. <laughs> oh, right, gonna... I'm Denistro, That's me. Hello. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh, I'm done. Yeah. Bye. Oh, we're gonna get on out of it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to stay safe, stay awesome, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Take care.